So you trust God with your head, but you're struggling to have faith in a real practical way that actually makes a difference in your life. You have doubts, you're getting discouraged, you feel like your faith is shallow and you feel like you're a disappointment to God. Well, watch this video to the end and I will show you a completely different way of thinking about your doubts that will transform your spiritual life because it transformed mine. So we know that faith is the most valuable thing to God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So what is faith? Well, the Bible defines it for us. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Biblically, it is to believe that God exists and that he is who he says he is in scripture. There is a spiritual secret which took me years to learn, but when you grasp this, it will change your entire spiritual life. And the secret is this, that faith is not an emotion, it is a decision of the will empowered by the Holy Spirit. And once you actually grasp this at a heart level, you will begin to stop judging your faith by your emotions and you will start having faith in what God says. Did you know that you can have thoughts and emotions, the complete opposite of what the Bible says, but still actually believe what the Bible says and have tremendous levels of faith? I'm going to show you exactly how. Now note that faith is not the complete absence of doubt. There is a difference between doubt and unbelief. Doubt is can't believe, unbelief is won't believe. Doubt is openness, unbelief is closed off. Doubt is an honest searching, unbelief is a stubborn dishonesty. Doubt is looking for light, unbelief is content with darkness. The doubter is someone who is looking for reasons to believe. We see in the Bible, John the Baptist and Thomas had doubts, but they believed in Jesus. The unbeliever is someone who has every reason to believe, yet they still reject the undeniable truth, like the Pharisees who rejected that Jesus is the Son of God despite his irrefutable signs, wonders, and miracles. God honors doubters who are seeking truth in the midst of their doubts, because get this, get this, even in the midst of their doubts, there is still the presence of some genuine faith. And God honors genuine faith no matter how small. The man who had a child that was demon possessed cried out to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. Now a better translation of this word in English would actually be doubt. I believe, help my doubts. And how did Jesus respond? He didn't say, you don't have enough faith, I'm not gonna help you. He healed the boy by casting out the demon and honored the faith, the honest faith that this man did have. The apostles asked Jesus to increase their faith. And he says to them, if you had faith, like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. So Jesus is using the illustration of the tiniest seed, which will grow into the largest tree because it's not the amount of faith that matters so much, but it is the presence of genuine faith which Jesus can use. Let me show you how this can work for you in your life practically. Doubts will arise in your life when you're tested. The fact that you have doubts isn't actually the problem. This is actually an opportunity so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though tested by the fire may be found to result in the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Faith isn't not having doubts. It's choosing to align ourselves with God's word when we do have doubts. You may feel that you don't have much faith, but you can still have a tremendous amount of faith because the evidence of your faith is not how you feel. It is shown by your actions. You may not feel like obeying God, but you can still choose to do it with the will empowered by the Holy Spirit. You may not feel like reading the Bible, but you can still choose to pick it up and do it anyway. You may not feel like praying because you don't think God is listening to you, but you continue to pray because you trust what the word says over your feelings that God is listening to you and in doing this you are showing tremendous faith you are handing your doubts over to God and you're walking in the faith that you do have you're asking God to increase your faith while you're exercising the muscle of your faith that you already have and when you're living in this way you have as much faith at least or even more faith in the person who actually feels the emotions of faith when they're doing these things. The devil can try to discourage you and put doubts in your mind, but he can't actually stop you from living out this faith. When we recognize that faith is not an emotion, but it is a decision of the will, we start living in a completely different way in accordance with God's word and our life is transformed. We stop focusing on the doubts that we have and we start focusing on the faith that we do have and bringing that before God and exercising that faith and asking him to increase it. 
We no longer become discouraged by the doubts that we do have, but we become encouraged by the faith that we have because we know that God will honor it no matter how small it is. Now listen to this. This is a reason why your faith may be shaken and why you may be having doubts and be discouraged. You may have your faith in the wrong thing. We are to put our faith in God and his revealed character, not our changing circumstances. Because God is unchanging no matter what happens. And if we're putting our faith in him, we're putting our faith in something that is completely sure. He is faithful, which means worthy of our faith. Our circumstances are changing all the time. And if we're putting our faith in better circumstances, better emotions, then we're actually setting up a false expectation and we're putting our faith in something which can come crashing down at any moment. Did you know that God doesn't actually promise you fantastic circumstances our faith and our focus should be in doing god's will in knowing god more becoming more like jesus and, and asking for the grace and strength to do the calling that he has called us to work out in our lives for his kingdom and purposes seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you your job is to simply seek after god's will his job is to take care of the rest. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. When we come to a place of maturity, we start to realize that the greatest work that God does is actually the work that he does in us. This is the most important work and the only work that will last eternally. And as we grow in maturity, this starts to become our greatest desire. It's okay to pray for other things in our life, but ultimately our heart's desire should be, thy will be done. So faith is the most valuable thing to God. Faith in him, in who he says he is, in what he said he's done and what he said he will do. We don't have to be discouraged by our doubts, but rather we can be encouraged to know that if we take the genuineness of faith that we have, even as a mustard seed before God, he will use this. Stop relying on your emotions to determine the level of faith that you have and being discouraged by these feelings of doubts that you have, but rather continue to walk in the faith that you do have, knowing that God will honor that and increase your faith. This will completely change the way that you think. It will give you a tremendous freedom and power and you will start to be walking in alignment with God's word rather than your doubts and your emotions and your feelings. This is the secret that transformed my life and the secret that will transform your life. So the question isn't, do you have doubts? But what will you do when you have doubts? Exercise the faith that you do have. Know that God will honor the genuineness of your faith. Ask him to increase your faith and leave the rest to God.